Hey everyone, it's Mojax, back in the DJ City UK lab. It's been quite a few weeks since I did my first look at the XDJ XZ from Pioneer DJ. I then did a second video confirming and clarifying a few things which I had been unsure about in the first look. Now that was quite a while ago, so why has it taken so long to get a full review done of this thing? Because I've had it the whole time. It's been here in the lab, I've played on it loads. Why has this review taken so long? One word, Serato. It's not a case of, as we see quite often, Serato support will be coming for this thing down the line. This thing launched with Serato written on the unit. It's all over the box. I never normally show boxes, they're not very interesting. But yeah, just to demonstrate to you, it's all over the box. This is a standalone device. It is also a record box DJ device, and it is a Serato DJ Pro device. And so I felt I could not do a full review of this until that Serato DJ Pro support was available for me to test because it was really an incomplete product until that had dropped. Thankfully, I got my hands on a beta version about a week ago. I've had a bit of time to play with that. Obviously, I've spent a long time getting to know the unit itself. So it's time now for my full review. Let's get into it. I've re-watched those first two videos I did on the XZ, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to repeat myself quite a lot here. But I think I need to, really. I can't do a comprehensive review if I don't. Plus, a fair bit has changed in the weeks since. It does feel a little like Pioneer DJ rushed this thing out of the door somewhat. Myself and other reviewers were still figuring features out when it dropped, hence my second video, and it's taken four months for the advertised Serato support to make an appearance. As I made clear in my first look, there is an elephant in the room. The XDJ XZ is a four-channel device, but one which offers only two decks in standalone mode without any extra hardware attached. If you were waiting for a standalone record box device with four decks in one unit, this ain't it. Whether that is a problem or not is really up to you and your needs. I suspect a lot of buyers of the XZ won't be that bothered, and for me it's certainly not a deal breaker. But considering the XDJ XZ costs a fairly eye-watering $2,300 street price in the US, it has to be reinforced. A word on that price? It's in the eye of the beholder, really. If you're looking for record box standalone with those lovely full CDJ sized jog wheels, this is the one unit to rule them all. It's dramatically more affordable than an actual CDJ rig, and only about $500 more than the very popular XDJ RX2, which has a much more limited mixer section, smaller jogs, and only two channels. The way I see it, there are three potential categories of buyer for the XZ. DJs who want an experience at home which is very close to a full Nexus 2 rig for a third of the price. Mobile DJs who want a big, heavily featured centerpiece which does a lot of different things. And smaller venues without the budget for the top-line hardware, but who still want to accommodate both standalone and software users. And for all of those jobs, the XZ should not disappoint, and the cost is not unreasonable. Getting into some specifics, let's talk about the Serato DJ Pro support first of all, as it's totally new. It may have taken a while to arrive, but thankfully it's great. The XZ has instantly dropped right into the top tier of control devices for that software, superior even to the CDJ2000 Nexus 2s in HID mode. Why is that? Well, waveforms are the main reason. Big waveforms all over that central display in the usual Serato colour scheme. The CDJs just don't have those. Not only that, but you get overview waveforms on there and on the jog wheels too, with cue points displayed. Really cool stuff. Control is tight, latency is low, and performance is overall completely solid. There were a couple of minor bugs in the beta version I played with, but I'm certain they are just that, bugs, and will be resolved quickly. The XZ unlocks the main Serato DJ Pro software, and DVS will work too if you own the DVS expansion pack. There is one limitation with that, you can only use DVS control on decks 3 and 4 in accordance with the physical inputs. I only mention that because in record box you can assign the inputs to decks 1 and 2, so it may be that's possible to have in Serato DJ Pro in a future update. It's no big issue either way though, it just means that when using DVS control, you'll always be on the outer two mixer channels. Switching between decks 1 and 3 on the left and 2 and 4 on the right is done, as it was in the old beta firmware, by double tapping the respective shift buttons. This works fine, but it will always seem like a super weird oversight on Pioneer DJ's part to not put dedicated deck selection switches on this um, 4 deck controller. If you played on the XZ without any prior knowledge of it, you could easily miss that it has that option available at all. 
Another thing which is also missing and I think the XZ could have done with is a second USB-B port on the rear for changeovers. You're not without options, switching between computer playback and standalone can be done seamlessly on the fly, unlike with some other competition, but it would seem to be a useful addition for a lot of the potential market for this device and it's not there. Changing between software and standalone does seem very reliable, which is important. As I was going back and forth, nothing ever flipped out or behaved in a strange way. Sticking with software for a minute, Recordbox DJ is naturally fully supported in performance mode in the same way as with Serato DJ Pro. For deck control, DVS is an optional extra, and it works just as well, again with waveforms everywhere and tight, high performance control. I'm not going to talk about it too much because frankly it was a given. If Pioneer DJ had messed up their own software on here they might as well just quit, but rest assured it works perfectly and if it's your performance software of choice you'll be very happy on the XZ. There is another option which Recordbox users have at their disposal, export mode. This is often overlooked, but it's one of my favourite ways to work with that software. You can connect the link with either USB or Ethernet, and it basically turns your laptop into a giant USB drive, with your full library, virtually no stress on the computer, and the ability to search for tracks using a full physical keyboard. I should note that at the time of making this review, it's not working for me on my Windows machine, but that's either something I'm doing wrong or it's a fixable bug, as it works perfectly on OS X. There is one definite restriction to playing in that export mode though, as you're back to relying on the power of the XE hardware itself, you're limited to two decks. Which brings us to that standalone playback. Pioneer DJ's implementation of that technology was the clear industry leader for the longest time, and to this day is still very, very good. Some aspects seem a little dated now compared to the new competition from other brands, and there's definitely no quantum leap in tech here compared to the company's older Nexus 2 players, or even recent mid-range kit like the XDJ RX2. But this device Device isn't really about innovation on that front, it's about delivering a slick, dependable experience, whether in a home or pro environment, and the XZ certainly does that. As I said in my first look, I've used CDJ standalone a lot over the years and felt immediately comfortable on the XZ. After a few months of testing, I'm also confident that works the other way as well. If the XZ is your practice device at home or in the studio, you'll feel right at home on the Nexus 2 kit and gigs. The way you work with your files is pretty much identical, and the controls on the player parts of the hardware, whilst not exactly the same, are extremely close in both location and function to those on CDJs. That applies to the jog wheels as well, which remain my favourite static jog wheels on the planet. There's just something about that physical, mechanical activation which feels superior to even the best capacitive jogs to me, and it probably always will. With that mechanical feel and adjustable tension, scratching on the XE is as good as a static platter device gets. I do wish the LEDs in the edges could also illuminate red when the deck is live like on CDJs, especially when using four decks with software, but it's not a huge thing. One noticeable difference with the jogs to CDJs, of course, is the amount of information you have in the jog wheel displays, with far more on the XZ. You get BPM, elapsed or remaining time, pitch, pitch range, artwork, key and more, as well as the aforementioned waveforms. You can choose a simpler display if you prefer, but I'm not sure why you'd bother. Another big difference is the RGB performance pads, which one could argue also make the XZ superior to CDJs. Pioneer DJ got a handle on making good pads for DJing years ago, and these are no different. In standalone mode, you have hot cues, beat loop, slip loop, aka loop roll, and beat jump, and the pads take on different modes when using Serato DJ Pro or Recordbox DJ in performance mode. They're a good size, well placed, and they feel great. No complaints. Things are a little cramped on the single screen compared to having one on each of two CDJs. They're basically fitting in everything you get on a single deck twice over, plus adding in extra displays for things like effects. Things aren't helped there by the screen being not exactly huge, but it's still workable. We have reached the point where I get a little frustrated at times by the limited touchability of the screen. You can't pinch waveforms or flick through your library, but if your main platform is Recordbox and CDJs, those won't necessarily be features you miss as you've never had them in the first place. One more note on the screen, and I've said this since the company first debuted stacked waveforms on the first XDJRX, the way Pioneer DJ draw waveforms is kind of weird. You'll see it in the video quite clearly, and it's definitely down to the hardware as it happens in every mode. Basically the waveforms don't seem to be being drawn together, but separately, so the grid markers never quite lock together in a stable way, always appearing to be pushing and pulling, even when playing tracks locked together with sync on. It's purely a visual thing, and using your ears quickly tells you what's really going on, but it does reduce the reliability of the waveforms as a guide a little, and it can be disconcerting when you haven't come across it before. 
A really cool thing you can do with the XZ is hook up extra separate CDJs or XDJs to it. There are dedicated Ethernet Pro DJ Link ports on the rear and you feed the audio in through the inputs on channels 3 and 4. Once hooked up you have basically a full 3 or 4 deck standalone setup and it is all completely smooth. You can use media sources on the XZ itself or the players all linked together and the effects are synced with the players too. I borrowed a pair of CDJs from Pioneer DJ to test this function out and I was very impressed. With a single CDJ 2000 and Nexus 2 costing almost as much as the XZ. I can't see that many people making use of it, but if, say, you already own a player or two, it's a killer setup. Something else you can connect to the XZ is the DJS 1000 sampler, and I'm sure the Terize SP16 too. Again, I borrowed one of those to test it out, and it works very well. There's a send on the rear of the XZ, which can be fed into the 1000 for live sampling. That takes a pre-fader signal from whichever channel you've chosen for the beat effects. The output of the 1000 can then be fed into channel 3 or 4, and it can be connected to Pro DJ Link as you would a CDJ. I did play around with that send to see if it could be repurposed as a regular send and return for external effects, and whilst you could use it that way in some situations, it's not great. It's just not what it was designed for. I said it before and I'll say it again, the mixing surface feels incredibly close to the DJM 900 Nexus 2, which is a very good thing. A few options like EQ type and fader curves have been moved into the on-screen menus instead of having physical controls, but that's no real loss. What you do lose by comparison is a lot of connections. There are no inputs whatsoever on channels 1 and 2, just a single line and phono input on the other two channels. There is an aux input as well, but that has a level control and nothing else. Outputs are just fine with XLR and RCA Master out and a booth output on balance jacks, but if you're wanting to hook up a lot of different gear on a regular basis, you'd still be better served with an actual mixer rather than the XZ. In use though, the mixer section is great. Loads of Pioneer DJ's top quality beat effects, color effects, and a superb Magvel crossfader, and the sound quality from the unit is also excellent. Definitely a step above something like the XDJ RX2, and from my testing, pretty much up there with the 900 Nexus 2. Even the Phono preamps, sometimes a letdown on the company's kit, are pretty decent. Build quality of the unit is very solid, and I know I'm being repetitive up there with the Nexus 2 hardware. You should be aware though, if you're looking to take the XZ with you anywhere, it's also around the size of a Nexus 2 rig as well, and heavy with it. 13 kilograms or over 28 pounds. If portability is your priority, then the RX2 is far more manageable with a smaller size and nearly a third less mass. Some other things I must not forget to mention, the EQ on the master is much appreciated, as is the fact that the master Q signal is taken from before the master output knob, a big improvement over the 900 Nexus 2 when mixing in headphones or in-ear monitors. The two mic inputs are fully comprehensive and have a genuinely effective feedback reducer function, as you can hear from this. Okay, testing the feedback reducer with a Yamaha HS7. So I'm gonna go over to it and get closer. Six inches away. Ow. Feedback reducer on. Light. Six inches away. Feedback reducer heavy. Six inches away. And just turn it off again for good measure. That's pretty impressive, and it doesn't make any difference to the sound at all. Seriously, this is cool. I really like this. This works really well. I generally prefer SD cards when playing standalone, but in the absence of a slot for one, having two USB ports on the top panel for media is great for changeovers and back-to-back -back sets. Even better, the second USB can be used to record the master output at the push of a button, even if you're playing from that drive. It records in 44kHz 16-bit, which is not mind-blowing, but certainly good enough for archiving your sets. I'd like to see one tweak though, the levels are a bit too hot. With the normal gain structure most people, including myself, use, you're hitting the limiter pretty much constantly. So whilst you don't get distortion, it's not ideal. If you do run the channels at the actual 0 dB mark on the VU meters, the recording I took was actually peaking at around about minus 8 dB. So a little firmware tweak could be in order there, I think. And whilst having the built-in recording option is genuinely awesome, I don't want to downplay that, I'd also like to see the ability to use the DJM Rec app with the X. Not for recording, but for the ability to do live streaming without a computer. So there you go, my take on the XDJ XZ from Pioneer DJ. I can't help feeling like this is the end of a generation. Like, I'm not that fussed, right, about the two deck thing. The fact you can only do 
two decks on here in standalone. I'm not that bothered, but I do suspect that if Pioneer DJ could have done four decks on this in standalone, they would have done, and it's not there. So I think maybe we've reached the limitations of this current generation of inbuilt standalone technology from Pioneer DJ. I don't know, that's speculation, pure spitballing on my part, but it's kind of how I feel. But that also means that this is the pinnacle of that current technology. Like there's nothing better than this. This is on a level with the Nexus 2 hardware. Absolutely, in terms of performance and in terms of quality, this is right up there. This is a superb piece of hardware. Whether you're talking about a mobile DJ centerpiece or whether you're talking about an install for a bar or a small club that's gonna give you flexibility of standalone and software as well, then this thing is gonna be a superb choice. It's like a third of the price of a full Nexus 2 setup. So yes, this may not be the most forward-looking, you know, the most future-proof device you're ever gonna see. But as of right now, this is as good as it gets with Rekordbox standalone. It's also probably the best controller that Pioneer DJ have ever made. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it just as a controller because you're paying a massive premium for that standalone stuff over something like the DDJ1000 SRT, which I also think is a great controller. But for a lot of DJs, this is gonna tick all the boxes that they need. It's got all that flexibility, it's got all that power, and it's just a lovely bit of hardware to use. Fundamentally, that's the most important thing. It's consistent, it's reliable, and it works very, very well indeed. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.